folks, thanks for joining me today. So far in my tutorials, I've shown you how to do paintings on uh, rocks. So now I'm going to show you that rocks aren't your limitation. Anything you can paint on and this is one of those things. So it's just a little teacup that I picked up. Um, before you start, always clean it with alcohol. I have a little spray bottle of 70% alcohol. I just give it a good spray and then I wipe it off with a clean paper towel. That just gets rid of all of like the grease and grime from fingerprints or from any stickers that were on it. It just gets rid of all of that for you. Then I used a seamstress measuring tape because it's very bendable and I measured from the top rim of the cup to the bottom and I got eight. So I divided it in half, used a dry erase marker to mark it and then I found my center and I measured that with uh, the handle on the other side of the cup. So I'm doing this on the front face of the cup rather than on either side, mainly because of the differences between right-handed and left-handed. If you're sitting there, do you want the design to be facing out or do you want the design to be facing you? So there's always that to contemplate. So to eliminate all of that, I just put it on the center uh, front of the cup. The colors being featured in today's cup are purple and that's because it's my favorite color. I love all shades of purple, it's just so beautiful. All of the colors that I use in today's tutorial are listed in the description below. However, these are just suggestion. I just happen to have these colors available to me in my stash, but you can make it any color you want. Follow along with the design, but I know it'll look great in reds or greens, blues, yellows, oranges, you name it, the rainbow is your limitation. So pick something, go with it, and you just use different shades of the same color. All of the tools that I'm using today, I purchased from the Dotting Center. I have left a link in the description below and be sure when you're there, use my discount code and you can get an extra 10% off on anything that you purchase. I absolutely love these tools and recommend them to anybody who is into doing the, the dotting. They're just amazing. So to catch you up to where I am here in the video. So I use that dot that I made with the dry erase marker as my center point, but I put the dot oh, just to the right of it because I wanted to be able to erase that and uh, not have it mix in with my paint. It, it doesn't hurt anything, but I, it's just something I do. Then I went in with a really, really small nail dotting stylus and I put a ring around that big dot. And then I went in and continued with sizing up my dots as I went around. And mistakes do happen. So make sure that you always have some Q-tips handy, especially on a surface like this. They wipe off so easily. And then you can just continue on dotting away. And that's what I did. So after I have got those rings around, I'm now on to the next row, and I'm going to put these dots in the center of two dots. Then I'm gonna skip one dot and then put the next dot in between the center of the next two dots. I continue doing this all the way around until I get to the other side. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. And if you really like it, I urge you to subscribe. And if you don't wanna miss anything, hit that bell because it'll give you notifications every time I post. Let me know in the comments below if you found this helpful, if you wanna see this maybe on a different color or maybe on a different type of media to paint it on, um, just leave me a comment below, let me know and uh, I'll see what I can get done for you. I chose a fairly simple design to put onto this cup. It's a teacup, so it's not very big. So I wanted something that was simple, but elegant at the same time. So that's why I chose this pattern. This pattern can be manipulated any way that you want it to be. You can add to it. You can not use these colors, use different colors, as I said before. It's just, it's endless what you can do with Dot Mandela art. 
and definitely it is the most relaxing thing I've ever done and I'm in awe of how many different patterns and designs you can get out of using different size dots. It's just amazing. The technique I'm doing here is termed walking the dots. Now I don't know if that's the official term but it certainly describes what you're doing. So basically what you're doing is you're loading your tool up with paint and then you start dotting. And as you dot, the less paint is applied because there's less paint on your tool. So it automatically uh, makes your dot smaller as you go along, which is pretty cool. And you don't have to use different tools. The other really neat thing is you don't really need dotting tools in order to do dot mandalas. When I started out, I used drill bits and toothpicks and ends of pencils, um, you name it. Uh, anything that's in your household, I used. I even used the ends of crochet hooks uh, or the other end of paintbrushes. Just whatever you can find that is round to give you that dot look. That's all you need. So now what I'm doing is a dot drag. So again, I don't know if these are the official terms for what I'm doing here, but it's what I call it. So you put a dot down and you make sure that there's a lot of paint on that dot because you're going to be dragging it. And I'm going to show you a, a close up here very soon about how I do this, but it's just basically putting a dot on just like that and it's loaded using a smaller tip of a dotting tool or again you could use a toothpick and just drag it and that's all I do here and uh, it really frames out the petal and looks really really good. Now once you get this all done you could leave it like that it's almost like um, a perfect flower uh, but no I don't I have to keep going and do more and you'll see that very shortly. Um, but it, these are all very simple and easy steps that you can do. It does take some practice to get things a little bit symmetrical, but don't be discouraged if it doesn't work out perfectly the first time. Just keep practicing. It's uh, so zenful, if I can use that word, and uh, that's what I find. It's just so mind clearing. Um, I don't think of anything else except for concentrating on doing the dots and I think that's why it's so helpful for me. So I'm using my largest nail stylus to put on the white dots and then I'm using my tools that I got from the dotting center to put on a bigger dot of purple just ab above the white dot. But what I'm doing is I'm pretending that there's lines there or I'm using my mind's eye to keep everything in alignment. So you may see me sometimes go from one side to the other just to make sure that it's aligned before I put my dot down. It's just again something that I do um, but uh, it's just an easier way for me to know where I'm putting my dots and that they're going to be aligned and somewhat symmetrical at least to the blind eye. So now I'm using a small dotting stylus and I'm just putting a center dot on top of the dark purple dot that I just used or just put on there and um, that's going to be my starting point. So what I'm going to be doing on this part is make like a windmill and so as a close-up I show you that I just walk the dots using my smallest nail stylist and I only do it on one side and this is what gives it that windmill or pinwheel um, kind of effect to make it look like this and I do this with three different colors so keep watching and you'll see it transforms right before your eyes. Once you've finished your painting you can cure this so then it becomes dishwasher safe at least on the top rack or hand wash and it can be used over and over again and the dots don't come off. The way to do this is you put them on a baking sheet and you put them into your oven cold. Then you turn your oven on to 350 degrees. Once it reaches 350 degrees, you leave it there for 30 minutes. Then you shut the oven off and you let it naturally cool down and then you can remove it. 
and that's what cures the paint to the cup that you're painting on or whatever kind of a glassware that you're using. You can use glass paint as well. What I'm using here is multi-surface paint and it works just as well. I've had no issues with it, at least after I've cured it in the oven and it's great. So I'm going to leave that uh, instructions below in the description on how to cure acrylic paint in your oven. And it's so simple, so easy to do. Uh, you just got to remember once it hits 350, wait 30 minutes, let it cook and then shut it off. But don't remove it until after it's cooled down. I have moved up to my largest nail stylist uh, to put on the white dots. And what I love about the nail stylist is they're two sided. So you've got a large size and a smaller size and they usually coordinate with each other. So when I use the large side to put my main dot on, I just flip it over and I can use the next size on the same tool and I can walk the dots around it really easily. Um, so that's how I get the pinwheel effect. Now I'm just going in and I'm putting in a top dot of the lighter or slightly lighter purple on top of all of the dark purple colors just to make it stand out that little bit more and to give it more of a 3D effect. Once this is cured in the oven and you run your fingers over it, you can feel the bumps and it's, oh, it's just so awesome. It's amazing. It almost feels like Braille. It's kind of neat. Anyway, so I just finished off doing my top dots and I let this dry uh, for at least uh, 24 hours, so overnight. And then I just put it in the oven. And there you have it, folks. Life is what you make it, so get creative. Mm -hmm.